The Rock of New York, 1027 wow. WNEW. Now, that's a song that gets us in the mood for our show, Anthony. You're out of your mind. Ted Nugent, Cat Scratch Fever, Metallica before that, Whiskey in the Jar from Garage Inc. Good afternoon. What's up? Hey. What up, what up, what up? How you holding up? Uh, I'm a little tired. we got to thank uh, Sammy Hagar for uh, getting the entire NEW staff hung over today. <laughs> Him and his tequila. You walk around the halls and everyone's feeling the effects of uh, the tequila we all were drinking yesterday. Had a good time with Sammy yesterday. Yes, we did. And then the party continued at the Hard Rock Cafe. Mm -hmm. Sammy sounded great. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Want to say hi to everyone we met? Good time. Very good time. Mm -hmm. So then we move on from here, I guess. Yeah, yeah. On this uh, hump day. Hump day, yes. <laughs> well, you want to start with a complaint letter or mm. what do you want to start with? Yeah, yeah, let's read this. All right. Mm. Well, once again, uh, our spies at NEW uh, got another one of the complaint letters in our hand. Intercepted. We intercept these things from time to time. To Scott Sherman. Yeah. Well, Kenneth Walker Walker from Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Jamaica. Uh, he wrote a complaint letter to uh, Scott Sherman, vice mm -hmm. president and general manager of WNEW. All right. Uh, Kenneth, that would be uh, Scott Herman. Herman, yeah. Drop the S. Drop the S. And, wow, he sent it to the chief financial, financial officer of Infinity Broadcasting as well. Whoa. All right, Kenneth means uh -oh. business here, Anthony. He must be serious. He must have a really, really good uh, complaint. Well, let's read on here. Dear gentlemen, I am contacting you to voice my disapproval at the reworking of the song Charlie Brown to insult Reverend Al Sharpton. Oh, come on. While I understand that most of your listeners might not care, many minority listeners take exception at disparaging comments towards anyone of any ethnic group who attempts to address the issue of pol uh, police brutality and discrimination. <sighs> I sincerely doubt such a song would be made to ridicule the work of Mayor Rudolph Giuliani, who is a media whore if I've ever seen one and who also asks on occasion, why is everyone always picking on me? It look, looks like you've just lost about 12 listeners, and 104.3 just gained them. First Scott Muni, now us. With great disappointment, Kenneth Walker. Please, Kenneth, come back. <laughs> you know, oh, Ken please. Kenneth just hears what he wants to hear, first mm -hmm. of all, because uh, I believe that we have made fun of uh, Mayor Giuliani probably two to three times more than we've made fun of Reverend Al Sharpton. Yes. It's not equal by any means. You know what I think? I think I'll write a Rudy Giuliani song. Just to prove our point. Okay. Come up with one of those, and uh, me and Joe will throw it together, and, uh, and we'll play that one. All right. And e we'll see if uh, Kenny uh, calls back and says, oh, okay. All we, right. We are equal opportunity offenders here. But, I mean, Kenneth has decided to, you know, you know, close up his ears when we're talking about uh, the mayor in bad light. And as far as the Reverend Al song goes, there's nothing in that song that isn't uh, true. Yeah. It hasn't been in the news. It's based on fact. Guy turns up every everywhere uh, to get his mug on on camera. Mm -hmm. he, he, everyone forgets about the Tawana Brawley debacle. This guy latched himself onto like a leech, and, and that was just a bunch of bull. Well, where's uh, where's Reverend Al Sharpton's uh, outrage over what happened in his community uh, last night? Yeah, with that poor lady that uh, is trying to help the, the 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 needy in the neighborhood over there, and she gets a ten inch knife in the back. Hmm. Let's see, Opie. What could be the reason he's not doing anything? Oh yeah, she's white. <laughs> that must be it. Yeah. Well, there's no outrage or anything. He's a hypocrite. Where's Reverend Al? He doesn't care about people. He cares about uh, black people, which is all fine and well. But don't go under the guise that you're just you care about people and you're not a racist. Mm -hmm. Oh, please. And Kenneth, uh, you say we lo we lost 12 listeners. Well, actually, we only have three to begin with. So oh, we're negative territory now. So now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, I guess we got to start off the show with the Reverend Al song. Well, of course. <laughs> because Kenneth Walker, he scared us so much that we better not play it anymore, right, Ann? Oh, of, oh yeah, you're right, Opie. All right, you're hanging with Opie and Anthony. If you want to send a fax, 212-957-WNEW. we got the instant feedback all set and ready to go here. Just go to the WNEW website, uh, click on our pictures, and there's a section there where you can send an email to us right here in the studio, or you could use the old-fashioned way and give us a call. 1027 WNEW, The Rock of New York. <laughs> Goo Goo Dolls and Dizzy from Dizzy Up the Girl. It's Opie, it's Anthony, and our pal Ralph Tatora in the studio as well. Hey, hey. Uh, Rick comes running in as uh, the mics go on to, to tell us the definition of snarling. That's a snarling. Yeah. Minor piece of information. <laughs> Yaddle daddle. So snarling. So snarling means BJ? No! <laughs> Who knew that? Uh, I was being offensive. Uh, Yaddle doodle dee. 
<laughs> Gobbledygoo. Chris, uh, man, you really got to get another job because we're sick of having you on our show here. Waddle Daddle, please hire me. <laughs> no. Somebody hire me, the Grease Man, <laughs> for a radio show. Well, I, I hear that uh, you're looking at a job for uh, Crayola. With, yes. With Crayola, I should well, say. Well, actually, the Grease Man is coming out with his own line of crayons. Uh, <laughs> racially insensitive crayons. Uh. <laughs> I looked in the paper this morning. I saw, the Grease Man saw that Crayola yeah. is removing... Indian Red, uh, yes, from their box of crayons, because it's not politically correct, and they don't want to tick off any people. Insensitive, right, to the Indians, uh, right. That's right. as we like to call them, the cowboy killers. Uh. I remember <laughs> as a cowboy slinging lead uh, against the Indians, their arrows whooshing over my head, uh. <laughs> the redskin. Uh. <laughs> but yes, very, very upset about Indian Red in the crayon box. Uh. Yeah, so Crayola pulled it. Well, they're, yeah, well, they're going to continue making the color. They want uh, they want people to come up with a new name for that uh, color. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see. How about Kimosabi? <laughs> yeah. Yaddle doodle. Snarling. Yeah. Bone dry. Bone dry. Yeah. You're just not politically correct, uh, Grease Man. Well, I'm I'm uh, hoping to get some money uh, with yeah. my new crayon line. Oh yeah. Yes. Greaseola crayons. Greaseola crayons. Greaseola crayons. Yeah. Could, could you and the sharpener on the side makes the crayons as pointy as my head. <laughs> Yaddle daddle, bone dry, bone dry. Yeah. Now, can you uh, name some of the crayons that you would, will be offering? Well, uh, let's say a young child, a little young waif wants to draw the sun. Oh, that's nice. Nice yeah. bright sun, sure. little picture uh, in his kindergarten class. You know what color he'd use huh. in the Greasola crayon set? What? Chink yellow. <laughs> Yaddle daddle. Just a big circle. You can get colored in with some chink yellow. <laughs> Yaddle daddle. And of course, you can't complete the scene without maybe some flowers basking in the heat of that chink yellow sun. Well, uh, that would be nice, sure. Right, so you draw some tulips. Okay. And of course, you use homo pink. <laughs> homo pink, uh, a shade of pink loved by bone smugglers everywhere. Uh. <laughs> Yaddle diddle, doodle die. <laughs> <laughs> How about uh, Polish purple? Ah, Polish purple sounds neat. Polish purple. Why Polish purple, though? Well, look, it's green. Yiddle <laughs> <laughs> diddle die. Oh. <laughs> the crazy Polacks can't get the colors right there. <laughs> oh, my. Mick, uh, Mick green. Mick green. Yes, okay. the color of the shamrocks. That's right. Mick green, yeah, <laughs> Mick green. Bone dry, bone dry, yeah. Yaddle daddle. Wow. And of course, wet back brown. <laughs> of course. Oops, I'm, I'm being removed from my seat. Hey. By CBS Brass. Uh. <laughs> oh, it's happening again, Dad. Uh. Whoa. Yaddle daddle. Yeah, they're, bon they're, dry, they're bon yanking dry. him out of the studio again. Whoa, look at that. CBS boss has dragged him out again. He's going to go back on his apology tour. Grease all the crayons. Grease all the crayons. Boy. That's, that's kind of cute, huh? A little insensitive there. Big time. <laughs> All right. Hey, Ralph, what's up? <laughs> oh, hi. <laughs> I thought you wanted to talk about Sammy Hagar. <laughs> Sammy Hagar, Grease Man's out of control. <laughs> well, we all went to the Hard Rock last night for Sammy Hagar. We Hey-Gar. certainly did. That was a lot of fun, huh? It was a great Good time, time yes. Perfect size crowd. You know, it really was a party. He wanted it to be a party, and they kept it down to what? About 200, 250 people, something like that. It was kind of nice to be in a Not club where you that. could walk around and enjoy the show. And yeah. It was neat. Absolutely. Where did um, Sammy get his bass player from, though? Oh, um, room the service was up for a while. <laughs> room service. Oh my God! I, I forgot her name, but she's been one of the Waburitos for a long time. Now. She looks like an Aztec woman. Yeah, she kicked ass. Yes, she's a great player. Yes, really good player. And do you know what Sammy pays her? Feeds her whole village for over a month. <laughs> Swear to God. Oh my God. Hey, why? I did want to make a comment, actually, about one of the uh, callers you had yesterday. Which one? Who was very eloquent and stating about how when Sammy came to Van Halen, he kind of elevated them to another level. Because he is a great songwriter, a great singer, mm-hmm. and a pretty decent guitar player. You forget I that. Mean, 
We were yeah, saying we were saying that at the Hard Rock. All of a sudden, he picked up his guitar. It's like he wow, did most I of the forgot. soloing. Yeah. yeah, most of the soloing. I forgot because it was like for eleven years he didn't really get to play a uh, uh, lead guitar. Well, anyway, you but, joined uh, Van Halen. You don't exactly think yeah. about going against Eddie. Yeah, I mean, come on. But you forget that he was a good uh, a guitar, guitar player guitar. in his own right. So absolutely. So he had all that and he brought it to Van Halen, uh -huh. which is why they did go to the, go to an unbelievable level. And again, nothing against Gary Sharon. Which Sammy said yesterday, and you guys said because of uh, the Boston connection. Yeah. You know, nothing against him at all, but it's just... Uh, it didn't work. Care. It I didn't work on that album. Like yeah. Sammy explained, too, uh, a lot of the uh, guitar work on Van Halen 3 was not uh, friendly for vocals. Mm -hmm. For any vocal work. Yes. So he's absolutely right. So, yeah, hats off to that caller yesterday. Very mm. insightful. Uh, and then, of course, we had that moment of silence yesterday, too, with that other phone caller. Wasn't a dry eye in the room. Which what one? Was that? I don't remember. He was just saying something so... Just gushing and dramatic. gushing over uh, Sammy, wow, yes. Sammy People enjoyed like, Sammy on our show yesterday. Crying. The new CD comes out March 23rd. It's going to be called Red Voodoo. Red Voodoo. The three songs we heard from the CD sounded great, played uh, very well live. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you have it. Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to Sammy coming back to play a show, maybe. Yes. Maybe for us. Who knows? Oh, you never know. we got Johnny playing a show for us tonight. Yeah, I can't wait. Hammerstein Ballroom tonight. Tickets still available for that, believe it or not. That's Two nights lie. out. Are you going? You going now? I'm going to try to make it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> sure you are. Two nights out. see your hands. The I'm going. Crossed. What's going on? No, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going out. All right. Oh, it's not used to going well, out. Anthony, you're used to this. Yeah. Going I, I used to do night. this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of slacked off, though. And uh, I'll admit it. I'm a wimp. Are you? Yeah. I'm going home tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I really wanted to see Johnny Lang. but I I'll... got the whole fam coming in. Really? Yep. Cool. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. Tom Schultz, 52 years young today. Happy birthday, Tom. 52 years <laughs> Just makes you feel old when someone from Boston's in their 50s. Wow. It's a little yeah. bizarre. Yes. I remember when Mick Jagger turned 50, and you're like, wow. He's getting He's up there. He's old. <laughs> yeah. Now it's bands from the 70s. They're all turning... 50 and older? Well, when you watch the VH1 stuff, behind the music and what happened to, they have all those shows, and you see some of those guys in the real old bands, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's like, wow, look at that. Grandpa's singing in Agata De Vida. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. It's Sophie and Anthony. Hey. We need pizza. Yeah, how do we how do we do that? I don't know. In here. Could someone send us a pie, please? No, let's get a pizza up here. And don't spit on it. Oh, I'm know. not going to be able to eat a pizza somebody brings up. Why not? Because you had to say that. Well, oh, we're hungry, though. We need look, somebody as the official taster. Yeah. <laughs> we need nutrition today. So, man, Joe Torrey. Was that a shock today? Oof. A little prostate uh, cancer, huh? Just puts life in perspective. Uh -huh. Yankees are just riding so high. Joe Torrey having a great career. Mm -hmm. And it all just doesn't matter. All of a sudden, you wake up one day and realize you got cancer. What do they got? The, the nuclear waste under uh, the stadium? There's too many Yankees getting sick. Mm. Got Catfish Hunter, uh, Daryl Strawberry, of course, yeah, Mickey yeah. Mantle's mess. <laughs> well, <laughs> now Joe Torrey. Joe D. Joe D. Well, <laughs> 84, that's a good contract. I don't know. What did, what did he die of? <laughs> Lung cancer. <laughs> See? Wasn't he a big smoker, though? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't know back then, Opie. No. They didn't know the dangers. Joe D., of course, uh, third day of his streak, mm -hmm. still dead. <laughs> That's so harsh. Sorry. <laughs> Some DJ got in trouble for uh, being insensitive to uh, Joe D. Well, he got fired, I guess. Yeah. A jock got fired for talking bad about Joe DiMaggio. Yeah. yeah he was saying that he didn't deserve all this credit that he's getting because... Uh, other uh, athletes are much better than him. And uh, the boss figured uh, they'd fire him over that. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine that? Well, obviously he has no ratings. Yeah. So well, if you have true. ratings, you're allowed to say stuff like that. Yeah, tell me about it, Dad. <laughs> All right, Ruth Grace, man. <laughs> well, if we're on the Joe DiMaggio subject, who else saw the great picture in the post of Ted Williams falling asleep on oh. today's show? You know, that's the downside about dragging some of these people into the limelight after they've uh, been living a private life for a few years, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. There's a reason they're not really in the public eye. It's because they're uh, falling asleep. Falling asleep. And we mentioned a couple days ago, I just don't want to see Ted Williams all old and stuff. Nope. A great mm -hmm. baseball player, you want to remember him young. Yeah. And vile. Yeah. 
Vile. Vile. Vero. Whatever. <laughs> well, with him, it was vile. Yeah. <laughs> he was... Kind of nasty. He was a nasty guy, so vile may work after all. But uh, Tom Brokaw filling in for uh, Matt Lauer on the Today Show. Mm -hmm. And the story goes, they had Ted Williams on, uh, what, uh, via satellite? From yeah. his home in Florida or wherever he's living now. Yes. And, uh, you know, they were getting his uh, his comments about Joe DiMaggio, his career and his life and stuff. Because Yogi was busy that day. Mm-hmm. It's like Yogi made the rounds to every show talking about it. But uh, they got Ted. Yep. And then I guess uh, they talked to Ted for a few minutes. And then they had Bob Costas on the couch. And they were talking to Bob. And they go back to Ted Williams twice. And he was out cold. <laughs> they put the camera back on him. And he's just sleeping. Is that horrible? It's you, you know, to his credit, though, it was Tom Brokaw. So maybe he lulled him to sleep with his just boredom. You think? His that might boring, be monotone rant. Well, I think we got the tape, the audio tape oh, good. of uh, Tom Brokaw interviewing Ted Williams as he was uh, nodding off to sleep. Would you like to hear that? Yeah, let's hear a bit. All right. Uh, Ted, <laughs> great to have you here on the Today Show with me, Tom Brokaw. <laughs> A living legend of the game, you knew Jolton Joe DiMaggio, the immortal number five. Could you please elaborate on what it was like in that era to play the game of baseball with <laughs> such tremendous athletes? Do you think, uh, maybe, such as Jolton Joe? Do you think Tom Brokaw put him to sleep with his monotone voice and stuff? From the sound of that, yes. <laughs> you think? His marble mouth monotone <laughs> rant. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised he didn't kill the poor guy. <laughs> so if we can have some exclusive comments about playing the game of baseball back in the 40s with Jolton Joe's Maggio. What was it like in a locker room talking with the likes of old number five as the old Ted? Hello, Ted. Ted? Why does this always happen to me, Tom Brokaw? People seem to nod off mid-interview. Well, you sound drowsy yourself, uh, Mr. Brokaw. Well, they were redecorating the studio. I think they used some acetone on some of the surfaces. <laughs> I see. Fume scenery. I remember an exclusive interview I did with Fidel Castro. He fell asleep in my lap. His big fuzzy beard got stuck in my fly. It was very embarrassing, almost an international incident. <laughs> So I'm used to people nodding off. A lot of times my own voice will... Now, Tom, I got... Mm. Tom, Tom. Hello, Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. I got to ask you, what was the hardest word you've ever had to say on the Nightly News? You may remember an episode of Le Leon Klinghoffer <laughs> being thrown overboard in a terrorist event on the ship Oh, boy, here it comes. <laughs> the hijacked cruiser, the Achille Glow. The Achille Glow. <laughs> Leon Klinghoffer on the Achille Glow. You have a, a tough Tom time. Brokaw, <laughs> MBC Nightly News. You have a tough time with uh, the name Monica Lewinsky as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Coincidentally enough, I sound much like Monica did during the act. <laughs> Monica Lewinsky. <laughs> Boy, could you imagine if Michael Lewinsky was on the Achille Glow? <laughs> I'd have to have the night off. Well, can we hear a little more audio of your interview with uh, Ted Williams? Yes, yeah, so maybe we could point out the part where he fell asleep. All right. Ted, you were a great player in the game. Of course, you can elaborate <laughs> on playing with the game of Jolton Joe DiMaggio, old number five, 56 game hitting streak. Ted, if you can. El <laughs> Ted? Yo, Ted. It's always happened to me. Hamburger, MBC, Nightwing. <laughs> Wow, we put him, him and Ted to sleep. <laughs> wow, very nice. <laughs>
Uh, it, it amazes me we get all this exclusive audio. Oh, anyway. I know. Me too. I'm stunned. We're, we're pretty special, <laughs> I guess, huh? It's just really special. We got the black shirt. All right, you're hanging with Opie and Anthony. Anthony, I, I feel privileged. We got uh, Ted Williams on the line here. Really? Would you like to talk to Ted real fast? Yeah, sure. Hey, Ted. Who's this, Opie? Opie and Anthony, what's Opie. up? It's Ted. Oh, I, I, I listen to you every day the air. All that great rock, classic rock. Rock, rock, rock. Uh, uh, look at all those sheep. 23, 24, 25. Good night, Ted. Ted Williams, everyone. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Black Crows, kicking my heart around. You're hanging with Opie and Anthony on the way. Kenny Wayne Shepherd and a tasty track from The Doors up next. Alabama song. Haven't played that one in a while. Hey. And, hey. Have you, like, gotten car insurance yet since moving back to New York? Yes. You have? Mm-hmm. You switched over your car insurance? Yes. Liar. <laughs> No, it's, it's cheaper. <laughs> I'm, ke I'm keeping the cheap insurance. Well, everyone knows by now that we're from here originally. Yeah. We did a little radio stint in Boston for three years. Yes. So, uh, you know, we got it insured up there, obviously. Well, until it expires, of course, I will just let it ride, you know. Well, the car insurance up there is, uh, is very cheap. Yes. Very cheap. We've been here, what, nine months? Yeah. I still got my Boston car insurance. But it's running out, finally. Yeah. So uh, I'm, like, calling around to try to get uh, car insurance. Is it more expensive down here now? Woo <laughs> you all right? <laughs> now, I must say, I haven't had a ticket in a very long time. In my youth, I was a little reckless. I, in youth? Wait, wait, wait. Long time. Let's, what? A couple of years. Well, like, let's say three or four years. Let's say two no, well, that speeding ticket in Vermont was it? I got three speeding tickets in three states. Yeah. All right. In the matter of a year. Uh, yeah, less than a year. <sighs> but anyway, so I'm trying to get car insurance, and I, and I called up this certain insurance company, and I told them all my information, Anthony, everything. I'm a little older now. Yeah. Got a, a leased truck. Yeah. They consider this a respectable job. Right. This whole deal. And they quote me. They go, uh, it'll, it'll be $1,800 for six months. Whoa! And I'm like, 3600 a year. <laughs> Whoa. And, and can't they tell you like that? <laughs> well, no, we don't want to say 3600 a year. That sounds like too much. Well, let me back up. I was, I was paying 1200 a year in Boston, okay? They quoted me at first 1800 for the year. Yeah. And then they're like, all right, could I just have your, uh, you know, your license number? Right. I said, yeah, sure. There's nothing. There's nothing on there they're gonna get, right? So I give them the, the my license number, yeah. and they're like, you're in our preferred status and everything. Everything's really good. You got Rock. a spotless driving record. I'm like, psyched, right? Five minutes go by, and they come back and they go, um, you failed to tell us that you were going 52 in a 25 uh, mile school zone. <laughs> school zone. <laughs> I said, I said, yeah, but that was five years ago. When you asked for my driving record, I assumed you'd go back, I don't know, what, two, maybe three years tops. Right. You know, so he goes, oh, no. Oh, no. We go back five years. You got a 52 in a 25 school zone. You are now in our worst category, and it will be $1,800 for six months. Oh, my God. $3,600 for the year. This is only one of, one offense on my, my, driving, uh, oh my driver's God. license. They went back five years? They went back five years. And I want to say to the guy, well, five years ago, I was also smoking crank. <laughs> People change. I'm not the same person I was five years ago. I thought it was something like two years that they go back with your insurance. That's what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Three, maybe? Maybe but three. five? Now, that's just getting out of hand. That's, that's the insurance companies getting a little greedy, wouldn't you say? I think so. That's what it's getting to. Uh, sorry, sir. Um, it seems you, you did hit your little sister's wagon on your big wheel back when you were five. <laughs> That'll cost you. That's going to cost you. An another thousand bucks a year. You never settled that claim with the ice cream pop you promised. <laughs> so, uh, 1800 for six months. Oh, Isn't that ridiculous? No there's one no way. No you... one has a spotless, spotless driving record for five years. Oh, uh, well. I do. You do? But, yeah. 
Do you you have no tickets in five years? Mm mm. No, let me knock some wood. Whoa, better knock that wood. So now I, I got to figure out how to get around this. There's no getting around it. What I'll, are you going to do? Oh, I will figure it out. How are you going to get around motor vehicle and, I will and the insurance uh, companies? I will definitely figure it out. Whew. They rape us. I'm raping them back. I'm going to figure out how to get around this. Well, it seems um, your great grandfather uh, Remus uh, <laughs> covered wagon he was driving lost a wheel and it went into the barn and and that'll cost eighteen hundred. That'll cost six you. Months. Yeah. Oh my God. They go back five years. That's crazy. What were you doing five years ago? I was uh, driving my company truck that I wasn't supposed to be driving. And you were a lot different, right? I was very responsible. No, you weren't. Well. I remember you back then. <laughs> you were reckless and wild. Very responsible gentleman. So, I, I, I know what I'm, I'm going to do to to solve this, but I, I can't say it on the air. Oh, 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 oh. I don't want to get caught, but when it goes through, then I'll tell everyone. All right. I'm not paying $3,600 a year for car insurance. Now they're raping you. When I have one offense on my license that's five years old, or just under five, because they go back five years. They're about like you. four and a half years ago. I don't know where they get off charging that. That's crazy. Crazy. Not worth it. There you have it. Fax line 212-957-WNEW. Instant feedback is uh, looking really good. You guys are kind of sick, though. Where's that one, man? What? About Joe Torre. We're all very sad about Joe Torre today. There's no jokes involved with uh, someone getting prostate cancer at a young age. Jason says, um, tell them you're married. It cuts your rate in half. Uh, yeah, I know. Hmm. How about that? I got a couple other zingers, though. John from Staten Island. Yankee Stadium, the house that cancer built. Ruth. Oh. Ruth, Jolt and Joe, Mantle, Strawberry, Tory, come to Shea where it's safer. I played baseball at Yankee Stadium. Remember the babe on his final days? We have that, that audio. horrible. Do you want me to find that audio? Yeah, maybe we should dig that up. I got Some that. other famous uh, Yanks with the, the big C. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. Kenny Wayne Shepard. Everything is broken. The doors before that Alabama song. You're hanging with Opie and Anthony. Hello. The pizza has arrived, so now we're going to be in a much better mood. Yes. I need food so bad. Mm mm. It was a long day yesterday. Yeah. Well, Anthony, I found the Babe Ruth audio. Ah. Oh. Now there's nothing funny about this. No, it's just one of those you know moments of reality. But we kind of uh, mentioned that we did have some Babe Ruth audio. And uh, our faithful listeners are like, you got to play it, you got to play it. I never heard uh, what he sounded like near the end of his life. Yeah, you might remember the babe, uh, some of those old newsreel films of him running around the bases and that fast motion old film kind of look. But uh, that's not how the babe went out. No. The bambino succumbed to a cancer. Well, I guess uh, he was talking to a bunch of kids, little leaguers, I believe. Yes. And uh, he was using his voice box. Oh, oh what was left of it. <laughs> And, you know, and this is real. Yeah, yeah. It's not Anthony doing a voice. This is as real as it comes. Right. So let's play this. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You know how bad my voice sounds. Well, it feels just as bad. You know this baseball game of ours comes up from the The only real game, I think, in the world. Baseball. you got to start... From way down the bottom, when you're six or seven years of age, you've got to let it grow up with you. And if you're successful and you try hard enough, you're bound to come out on top. Just like these boys have come to the top now. Thank you. Oh. Oh, hello, sir. Let the babe hear it. Yeah, keep smoking. <laughs> Puff away there, Bambino. They want to um, make kids stop smoking. Just Godspeed, Bambino. They should put that on TV. Yeah. Not the cool, hip, you know, uh, commercials they do have for smoking. Yeah. Why aren't you smoking? Well, I make up my own mind. Yeah, they show the kid with the backpack. You've seen that one yet? Do you want to just smack him in the head? Of course you do. He's walking and the camera's on him. Well, I don't have to smoke. Yeah. I don't do what I want. Yeah. Hey, wait up. To his friends. Mm -hmm. And he turns to the camera guy and goes, are we done? He's like, get back here, you little bastard. No, we're not done. You'll sit here until I say we're done. 
Are we done? It's not effective. No. Yeah, well, but... of course it's not. Look who puts those ads out. Philip Morris. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. It's the cigarette company. You think they want to show? <laughs> Lead. Uh, uh, where, where is it? I've been smoking my whole life. <laughs> No, they show some you know, hip little kids. I don't smoke that I want. Little bastards that you wouldn't have as your friends. They're the ones not smoking. Do you see the other one with the girl? Which one's the... What? She's sitting in the windowsill, a little wormy girl. Because sometimes it's what you don't do that tells who you are. <laughs> You're looking at her going, I would never have been her friend in school. All right. The, the Philip Morris commercials come across like, look at these uncool dork bags that don't smoke. Yeah. It pretty much spells it out. Was anyone expecting anything different from the cigarette company? Basically, it's, it's like McDonald's going on an anti-burger campaign. <laughs> you know, they'd show all these uh, people that uh, you would never be friends with eating, uh, not eating burgers. I had a uh, a relative through marriage, my uncle's ex-wife's uncle or something. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was over. Uh, you know, for Christmas and stuff. And he yeah. Had, he had the voice box. Oh, he had the hole in his throat. It scared the living hell out of everyone. And he would uh, he would sit in a room by himself with his voice box and smoke through the hole in his neck. Yeah, a lot of times uh, it gets to that point. Lost his voice through, because of smoking and continued to smoke through the hole in his neck. They wear that big ascot looking thing to cover it up. That big cloth up I, front. Oh no, he didn't cover it up. It looked like a blowhole, man. He didn't cover it up. No. No, just floppy skin and stuff. And he put the cigarette right there and smoke while he's talking to you. Grandpa, why is your balloon knot on your neck? <laughs> oh, God. I don't know. After that, how 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 could you smoke? I don't know. Ugh. I'm just glad he didn't sing uh, the Christmas carols with us. Bye, bad night. Oh, late night. <laughs> they got to do something. Can't they implant those? They're making all these computer chips all small and everything. They can't implant something in some guy's throat. They still got to hold that big bad grandpa looking thing by the side of my neck. Well, what's Jack Klugman using these days? He's running on uh, he's running on 50%. Oh, really? Yeah, he only had one vocal cord removed. Oh, okay. So he's only running on one. That's why that they sound like this. Oh, Felix. And look at your room, it's a mess. Ah. Just not the same. <laughs> you need, no, no. He needs his whole voice for that character. Oh, yeah, I know. They, they, I saw some clips of the odd couple on uh, Broadway when they did it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the reunion. And it was just the same. Oh, it, wa it wasn't the same. No. Felix, I'll keep my room messy if I want. <laughs> but Oscar, look at your room. Get out. Get out. Get out. It's like, ooh, this isn't fun. This isn't funny. Yeah, and Tony Randall's in the paper today with his his wife that's 50 years younger than him. Yeah, you got to give him credit. You know what I was saying the other day? Mm. They have, what, two kids now? Yeah. They yeah. got two kids. Uh, you know, babies. Yeah. Could you imagine that your mom is, you know, 29? Yeah. Your dad's 79, <laughs> and you're what, one years old, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, love doesn't know age. So now you're four or five years old, maybe a little older, six, seven, or eight, and you realize, my God, my dad is not going to make it to my damn high school graduation. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be tragic because you're in love with your dad, and you realize, oh, my God, this guy simply just does not have not going to make it. Many years left on this planet. Yeah. That's got to be tragic to a kid. A little selfish of him, I think, wanting to uh, fulfill his being a father uh, at such a late age. Mm-hmm. You know, so then what? You know, the kid's like seven years old, and you start doing those father-son things at school. <laughs> you, what, what, what's, how old will he be then? How old is he now? He's seventy-nine. Seventy-nine? Yeah. So what? Eighty-five years like, old? 85, or something 86, like that? Six when the kid's seven? Yeah. Oh my God! They could bond, mommy. <sighs> Mo mommy could uh, change both their diapers at the same time, and they could bond that way. I guess. <laughs> You go to school and your friends are like, "Ew, look at look at the mummy. That's uh, his father." It's <laughs> gonna be tragic, bro. Yeah, it's pretty bad. You get just seven or eight and go. Wait a minute, my dad is eighty six. He's not gonna make it. Gee, thanks, thanks, pop. Thanks, dad. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks for being there. Yeah, Anthony, you're not gonna believe this, but uh, on the line, uh, live from hell, is Babe Ruth. From hell? Yeah, because we played his little audio clip. Uh, a few minutes ago, and he wants to talk to us today. Well, he was uh, kind of a bastard, yeah. He probably did end up in hell. Well, the, the, the... well remember the stories you used to hear? Mm -hmm. Always with the girls and the whores and smoking. And drinking and... 
boozing so from it up. Live from hell. Well, the caller ID says hell, yeah. The Bambino. Is calling from hell. 1027 WNEW, the Rock of New York Creed from their debut CD, My Own Prison. That's the track one. It's Opie and Anthony. Hey. Now we're getting some energy. We finally uh, ate today. Ah. That pizza was very, very tasty. we got to thank uh, Kevin for hitting the streets of New York to get that for us. Man, that's something uh, New Yorkers should definitely appreciate and not take for granted is the pizza. Because uh, being in other states, I remember in California, mm -hmm. you go to these places, yeah, dude. It's genuine, like, New York pizza, man. It's it's just the coolest. <laughs> oh, no, that's like guava juice on it, man. <laughs> guava like, what, what juice. I want a pizza. And the crust is never the right. No. Then you come home to New York. It's like, yeah. Well, in Western New pizza. York, they make it really, really thick. Wow. I don't like that. I, like I don't it. like that. Nice and thin. Little red pepper on it, and it's good to go. Like it like you get it here. Mm -hmm. Well, he's calling back. We got uh, Babe Ruth on the line. Babe, um, I hope we have the delay on, because I know Babe usually talked uh, with a salty language, Opie. Well, we have the delay on, Anthony. Okay, he was uh, not, not the most uh, gentlemanly guy. Mm -hmm. You remember of the Bambino from what I've read? Mm -hmm. uh, kind of obnoxious, always with the, with the women, booze, cigarettes. Whoring around. Yeah. Playing Just drunk. Kind of nasty. Playing hungover, I should say, not drunk. An American hero. In baseball, but uh, kind of a nasty guy. Yeah. Well, mm. we played um, his audio clip uh, late in his life a little while ago, which is just very, very tragic. Nothing funny about it. It's Died just, of uh, throat cancer, yeah. It's just kind of interesting to, to hear what he sounded like uh, late in his life. Yeah. And uh, now Babe Ruth's on the line, Anthony. Live from hell, so let's go there now. All right. Yo, Babe! How you doing? It's Babe Ruth, live from hell, everyone. Uh, how you doing? You got, you got any whores there for me? <laughs> 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 you all right, Babe? Yeah, I'm in hell. How all right could I be? <laughs> okay. They got me coaching a little league team down here. You're coaching little league in hell? <laughs> little fuckers can't even play. <laughs> or drink. <laughs> Yes, I know that. The electric voice box. It was actually an accident. What do you mean? Well, some chick I was with was using a dildo. <laughs> and I accidentally went down on her and realized I could talk. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you little f***. Hit the ball. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, better, hey, better, hey, better. F*** you. <laughs> Hey, babe, have you seen your pal Lou Gehrig down there in hell? No, that pussy was a good guy. He went up to heaven. He did, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he died of that Lou Gehrig disease, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, what are the odds of that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice hey, you little prick. <laughs> hey, we're going to get together with Billy Martin and Michael Kennedy tonight for happy hour. Billy's driving. You should see Michael's face. It looks like my larynx. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. <it's> <laughs> whoa, whoa, what's wrong, babe? Uh, babe. I, 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 I just spilled a beer in my voice box. <laughs> my wife's going to kill me. Wait, babe, you're married? I did say I was in hell, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I believe that's an exclusive for our show, Anthony. The Van v well, everybody was getting Yogi Berra mm -hmm. uh, recently, and uh, Ted Williams. We actually got to talk to the Babe. The Babe, yeah. He sounds a little bitter. <laughs> we wanted to ask him about Joey D and stuff, but uh, we were cut off. He poured the beer in his uh, voice box. <laughs> his what can I tell you? Box. Oh well. <laughs> I think he's going to be calling from time to time. Huh? Yeah, maybe we have to check back with the babe from hell. All right. There you go. <laughs> God, that was sick. <laughs> I can't be part of this anymore. <laughs> 
The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW. Everlast, what it's like. On the way, we got Hole and Zeppelin from Zeppelin 2. It's Opie and Anthony. Phones are a little slow today. We like getting you guys on the air with stuff. Mm-hmm. But no one has anything worthwhile. Not you, today, huh? No. It happens. 212-757-1027 if you want to get into the show today. Mm -hmm. If you uh, want to comment on anything we've discussed thus far, that's cool. Or if you got something yeah. brand new, that's all right, too. All right. Yeah. Those uh, Nixon tapes that they released showing Nixon was a racist? I haven't seen those yet. Oh, my God, Opie. He was saying things about the Jews. He called uh, one, one Jewish guy on, on a tape a kike. He was using that kind of language. The President of the United States. Can you believe that? That was back in the 70s. Yeah. Yeah. You were kind of allowed to use those words still. No, I don't think the President <laughs> could have uh, said something like that. It was, it was on tape, though. Of course, Nixon... Uh, taping everything well was he at a, a press conference or something or is this like a no private this is a private inside the white house he uh, he had tapes all hooked up uh in in the oval office and everything mm -hmm. that's what got him in trouble with watergate right because everything was taped but um now they're they're releasing tapes that he was calling you know people that had that who's the who's that black boy wow. yeah yeah stuff like that just really rank stuff but um, I'm I'm convinced at this point that you got to be a complete scumbag to be the president of the United States of America. You think? I know that's a pretty heavy statement. But like yeah. in what way? I don't, after just you know reading more and more about Clinton and now Nixon, it just mm -hmm. seems like it's just a job for someone that's a scumbag <laughs> that has just the biggest, <laughs> hugest ego. I think it just proves that the. You, know, you can't just put them up there just because they're the president. It's like, hey, look at this guy. He's like a god or something. No, they're just regular uh, jerk-offs, you know, mm -hmm. with all, all the weaknesses inherent in all of us, Opie. But um, I don't understand. Uh, this Nixon stuff comes out, but it never came up when he was in office. No. You know? Well, because they didn't have the type of press we, we do now. Yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grease man. Fire that president dead. He's dead. Yeah, the dee. He's dead, Grease man. Good. I just slung him full of lead. Now, Grease man, when are you going to... Snarlins, oh. snarlins. When are you going to get a job? We're sick of you being on our show. Well, I'm hoping, uh, hoping I don't need a job. Yeah? Yes. I'm going into the crayon business. Yeah, I was looking on the instant feedback. Crayons, uh, the colors of life. <laughs> Yaddle daddle. Bone dry, bone dry. Well, well, if you let someone else talk around here, uh, Grease Man, mm -hmm. I, go, go I, ahead. I, I would tell you through the instant feedback, a lot of people want to order your brand new uh, crayon set that you go mm -hmm. into. Crayons. I'm going to pick up the slack where Crayola left off it. Well, there's a big story in the paper today that they have to rename one of the crayons mm. because it's not politically correct. Yes, engines getting angry. Uh, because of Indian Red. Yeah, they're doodle. Indian Red is... Indian in Red. They're changing the, the, the name of that uh, crayon, Grease Man. What, to drunken Indian Red? <laughs> yeah, they're doodle. Great goobity goo. <laughs> Grease Man, could you go home? Well, can I sell my crayons? You want to sell them again? Did you pay for advertising? No. But the grease man needs money. All right. The grease man got fired for racist comments. Yeah, we now don't... I'm on my apology tour. Yeah. Snarlings, bone dry, bone dry. <laughs> yeah. Now, what's the name of the crayons again? I'm calling him Greasola. Greasola. Greasola crayons with the sharpener on the side to make him as pointy as the grease man's head. All righty. Yeah, the doodle deedle day. And, and some samples of your crayons in this Greasola set? Well, the little child wants to wants to make a, a big sun in the sky. What a cute little guy making a big sun. What color would he use in the grease man's crayon box? I believe it would be yellow. Chink yellow. <laughs> Grease the man. grease man's chink yellow wear. Yada deedle do. A big son of chink yellow. And it says right on the side of the crayon? Of course. How would he know what he's using? All right. Less on the side. Cute little crayon says chink yellow. Yada deedle do. Snarlins, bone dry. Any other uh, examples of crayons in your set here? Okay, underneath the big bright sun. Mm hmm. Is uh, tulips. Tulips. Growing. Very nice. Tulips, tulips, tulips. Yeah. Do -do, yada doodle dee. And they're pink. Okay. Yes, pink tulips. Very nice. So and in, in, well, in the box. I, I was going to say, I'm assuming it just doesn't say pink on the side of your crayon. Homo pink. <laughs> <laughs> the favorite color of bone smugglers everywhere. Bone smuggler, bone smuggler. Eh. Bone smuggler. You're the biggest racist we know. Bone dry. Yeah. Hey, you're a little. 
How about Polish purple? Polish purple? Polish purple, yeah. Why Polish purple? Why? Because look, look, it's green. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even get the colors right there. That's a Polish joke. Uh, yeah. Yaddle deedle doodle die. Oh, we figured that out, yeah. Wet back brown. <laughs> We're coloring the ground with wet back brown. <laughs> Yaddle doodle. <laughs> and then, of course, I have the special Italian crayon there. And what's that? Look, it's a grease pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Greasy little dago pencil. Yaddle deedle doodle die. Bone dry, bone dry. Very nice. Oh, wait, oh, what? look. Wait, oh, CBS executives, they're dragging me out again. What a deal to do, yeah, a deal to die. There he goes, Don't the crease man, everyone. Drag. Obviously, he doesn't have a new job yet. He's got to hang out on our show. Selling crayons, man. Selling crayons, yes. My goodness. He'll, he'll never learn. No. He'll never learn. Horrid man. What a horrid man. Whew. 1027 WNW, the Rock of New York, the latest from Hole. That's Malibu from Celebrity Skin. Zeppelin before that from Zeppelin 2. It's Opie and Anthony. Thanks hey. for checking us out today. Definitely appreciate it. Yes. Uh, you're going to Johnny Lang tonight, huh? Yes, I am. I'm out and about. I'm going to have to bail. Went out last night. Sammy. Mm hmm. Now tonight. Come on. What's the matter with you? What do you mean? I don't know. You're wussing out. Yeah, I'm not. Well, You're punking happening. out, man. It's not happening today. You're going to have to do it alone, I guess. I you know what's weird? What? Um, you know, they want someone to bring up uh, Johnny Lang tonight. Yeah. And they want us to do it together. <laughs> yeah. And I, I t flat out told them, you know, I love Johnny Lang. I try mm. to see him every time he's in town. Yes. But I, I'm just too tired to go tonight. Okay. So they don't want you to go up on stage by yourself. It's either we go up on stage together or we don't do it at all. We're individuals, too, man. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Yeah, that's kind of weird. I don't care, though. I don't want to go. I don't like doing them. So I think Ralph Tour is going to bring on That's cool. Yeah, I don't like going up there and, hi, everybody. Yeah, but you should go up there with them. Make some stupid joke why I'm not there. And I'm just going <laughs> to... But it's just a, another example how we just overthink radio. I don't think the person that is in the audience watching Johnny Lang cares if only Anthony from the Opie and Anthony show is on stage to <laughs> introduce Johnny Lang. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, wow, Anthony, I listened to him. Cool. That's what he looks like. That's all they're thinking. I just, I they're like... not thinking, wow, why isn't Opie with Anthony? See, I like doing things uh, when we go out and have the parties like we did on Valentine's Day and we're going to do on uh, St. Patty's Day. Next week. Yeah, yeah. Don't uh, don't make plans. Believe me, we have something cool cooking. Uh, but I like doing that stuff. I don't like just getting up on stage though and introing bands. I mean, eh. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. I think people want to see and stuff. I don't, yeah, but I, I, when we're doing things, when we're out like that, just getting up and introing bands. I personally, I personally don't really like doing that. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, we're gonna blow out something from the Opie and Anthony archives here. What do you got? Uh, we're getting a lot of requests for this this uh, particular call. I like this one a lot. And if I queued it up right, it'll it'll be the scrotum call. <laughs> and if you didn't, <laughs> I know who knows what it'll be. Then it's the FS head call or something. Well, let me say real fast here. Thank you for calling Cream Up. Yeah. Okay. This is it. Cute little game we invented. Okay. You call up like uh, department stores and stuff mm -hmm. that have a lot of different sections. Yeah. And you just say one word over and over again. The most famous one is Butt Plug. Butt Plug, from, yes. From our Demented World CD. WNEW New York, Infinity Broadcasting. Anthony Stacker 2. Stacker 2. What's this about, Opie? Well, this is some kind of a pill? Uh, yes, it is. I, I tried it on the way in today because I was feeling a little tired because of the Sammy Hagar show last night. Mm -hmm. And it pepped me right the F up. It peps you up. I would be asleep today if I didn't take Stacker 2, and that's the God's honest truth. So it gives you some energy, and it's also it helps you to lose weight and build muscle? Well, yeah, it's a fat burner guaranteed to work in just 45 minutes or your money back. The same fat-burning, muscle-building agents relied upon by professional bodybuilders to become rock-hard, sculpted, and fat-free. That's another thing I heard. You know the girl upstairs? Uh... She using this? Uh, the Hummer Queen's using yeah. Stacker, too. Yeah, said, she says that if guys take this, for some reason, I don't know what she meant, you'll be stiffer than Joe D. <laughs> that, I don't know. I don't know what that means, but 
She said that, huh? Yeah. Oh, very interesting. Uh, world's strongest fat burner. You will become a firm believer. One stack or two is so strong you can feel its powerful metabolic boosters working hard. It will dissolve fat, build muscle, and crush cravings while supercharging your energy level. All in just 45 minutes after taking one of these pills, Anthony. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. And this is cool. A quick fix for your problem areas as well. And you could get this stuff in two days because the manufacturers of uh, the world's strongest fat burner are right in New Jersey. So you'll receive your product in two days. All right. So you were, uh, you were uh, energetic after taking this? Yes. Yeah. You know, I like to try all this herbal crap in general. Sure. Like I was on ginseng for a while. That was helping me. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, stack or two. I'll try it. And it definitely pepped me up. A boost. A boost. Yes. If you want to try it for yourself, you can call 1-800-LIGHTLINE today to order the world's strongest fat burner. That's 1-800-LIGHTLINE. L-I-T-E. L-I-N-E. Begin to transfer your body into a perfect 10 in just a few days. Money back guarantee. If you don't feel the powers of Stacker 2 in just 45 minutes, you are guaranteed your money back. You have nothing to lose but wait. Give them a call. 1-800-LIGHTLINE. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Collective Soul from their latest CD, Dosage That's Heavy. Don't forget this Friday, we start the winning. You got chances to win tickets to see Collective Soul. They're playing March 29th and 30th at the Bowery Ballroom and April 2nd at uh, Trade Winds. And I, I was just informed, Ant, that Collective Soul's coming up to uh, hang with us. And, oh, they are? And play? Oh, and I was allowed to talk about it? No, probably not. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I'd like to strike that from the record. <laughs> we can't confirm that Collective Soul will be here playing on our show. Well, you know what happens. <laughs> we say anything, and then someone else says something, and before you know it, they're being inter uh, interviewed by... Uh, my Howard. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And we don't get it. All right. Uh, we got to keep our guests under our hat. Yes. Shh. To the last minute. Ixnay. Let's see what else is going on today. We've hit a, <laughs> on a lot of things today. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, Anthony. Our job. Uh, Barbie turns 40 today. Ho, ho. Wow. How about that? we got to be like all the wacky other DJs that have like a Barbie lookalike contest or something. Happy birthday, Barbie. <laughs> ho, ho. And boy, is she still cute. Hey, let me tell you, boy, what she does to me. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> fantastic. Uh, yeah, all the other wacky DJs doing their Barbie bits. Do you see the guys, like, selling the collector's Barbies on the shopping channel? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. This is a good one. <laughs> this is a collector princess Barbie, we like to call it. Princess Barbie with a little crown. And this, and it's only three thousand dollars. <laughs> I bought three. Yeah, we could all afford that. I remember being a child, just in love with Barbie. <laughs> my mother would buy me Barbies. My father would just beat me, but my mother would buy me Barbies. <laughs> I can't get enough. <laughs> uh, Here it is, summer swimsuit Barbie. Look at her, the slut in her little swimsuit. <laughs> but wouldn't he like to? The Ken doll better? Ken? Yeah. No, he doesn't have the equipment. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I had the G.I. Joes when I was a kid. Of course. And Kung Fu uh, Grip, man. Yeah, but always uh, my sister Dawn had the Barbies, and she would always be like, Oh, Anthony, you want to you play you know, G.I. Joe and Barbie? Because she didn't, you know, she, me and my brother, and she was the only girl, so she didn't have other sisters to play with. So I was like, G.I. Joe and Barbie? And I'm like, yeah, okay. So she's setting the house up all nice and everything and thinking G.I. Joe is going to come home for a tea party or something. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, Nam is raging. <laughs> of course. So, you know, Joe's coming home from uh, the country there and he's... You want to get some. He's, yeah. And it would always end up like that with Dawn crying in the corner. What are you doing to Barbie? <laughs> I was like, yeah, come on, come on. I'm banging them together, you know. Yeah, get some. <laughs> He's still got his helmet and boots on, you know. G.I. <laughs> Joe. And then you pull the string. <laughs> yeah, because it was a talking G.I. Joe, so you pull the string. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Good work, man. <laughs> yeah, it was good work, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Mount up. I just did. Yeah, on Barbie. <laughs> And she would always cry. Yeah. I would just ravage the house, breaking everything, steal the little Barbie car, G.I. Joe's, and he'd running over Barbie. That was a wreck. She'd just end up in tears crying. Mommy! You got to find the pictures of the Ken dolls. 
that we put on our website a few years back. Oh, right. <laughs> do you still have that? I do right? have those, yeah. Right. I, I have those at home. I could probably pop those up on the website, yeah. Yeah, we had a little comic strip with a couple of Ken dolls. They were very good friends. Yes, they were. They worked at the office together and then went home for a party one night. It was pretty cute. I know, as he had the tip of a big pen and he's <laughs> doing some. Uh, it's, it, it's disturbing, but kind of funny. For a goof, you got to put it on the website for a few days. I could do that. All right. And do we still have the, 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 the video that one of the listeners sent in? Hmm. Of, um, uh, uh, was it Ken? Oh, yeah, I got that one. Ken Pounding Barbie? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty funny, too. Yeah, before we got thrown off of three servers, I had that one up. But, uh, I think the one we're on now will have us put it up. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Very nice. Good work, men. All right, so there goes our Barbie break. That was... <laughs> All right. That was top shelf stuff there. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Top shelf stuff. Uh, yeah, no, it's good stuff, really. Uh, Lewinsky's dad blast president. Oh, this poor guy. Hey, so did she. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. Okay. He blasted her. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Can you imagine being Lewinsky's father, though? Well, a little angry, I would think. And a little angry. Want to get? He wants to get back at the guy that did his daughter wrong, but he's mm -hmm. the president of the United States. What do you do? You Powerless. Can't, you can't do anything. Drive to the house and call him out? Yeah. Can't. You can't. Can't wait for him somewhere to beat him up. Secret Service will kick your ass. Right. So what do you do? He just has to sit there at home and... Take it, all angry. Yeah. Oh, that anger just built up. Oh, it's got to be horrible, though, knowing what your daughter went through, and there's absolutely went nothing. Went through. She seemed to know. be chuckling. Didn't matter. She's enjoying it now. She was in England where she uh, broke down, had a little bit of a problem at her signing, because mm -hmm. uh, people were yelling out things to her, like, how is the president in bed, you know, how does the president taste, and <laughs> where's the dress, and the splooge, it was just, and then she couldn't handle it. Yeah. What did she expect? Uh, Monica, you're, you're a lovely girl. We love you, Monica. What does she think? She actually thinks she's a celebrity for something else other than just... Than what she's a celebrity for. <laughs> you know? That's all she's known for. She thinks she's going to go over to England and they're all going to love her. Because, uh, Monica, look, she's the new lady die. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Uh, all right. <laughs> Let's see. They cross that off your list now. Yeah, that was that was kind of an average bit. We'll, <laughs> we'll give that a C. We're rating our bits now. <laughs> Monica, if you're not down with that, I got two words for you. Suck it! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you know what we've got to do before we get out of here today? What? Getting a ton of requests. People want to hear uh, Babe Ruth from hell again. The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, ACDC, oh, you boy. shook me all night long. Sammy Hagar's latest before that, Mas Tequila from Red Voodoo. A couple party songs in a row there for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's Opie and Anthony. Just trying to get through the day today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mostly thanks to Sammy Hagar bringing in the tequila yesterday. It's hard to start drinking at, uh, what was that, five? Five and going all the way to whatever. Yeah, you know, kind of out late last night, the uh, Hard Rock. Seeing Sammy. Mm hmm But we're having mm -hmm. fun today. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm going out tonight again. I know. I, I don't know how you do it. I just just can't do well, it anymore. I've got to go see Johnny Lang. Well, tell him I said hi, all right? I will. Okay. Um, well, we got on the subject of Babe Ruth earlier. Well, first of all, I guess it started with Joe Torre. I mean, we really feel uh, kind of sad today. Joe Torre coming down with uh, prostate cancer. Yeah. Hopefully they uh, caught it early and everything will be okay. It's mm -hmm. just very tragic. No it joke is. here. I'm uh, I'm being serious. My no. my dad's uh, suffering through a little bit of that, so it's not it's not a fun thing. I guess not. But uh, it, it just puts everything in perspective. Joe Torre, the most liked sports figure in New York these days, mm -hmm. just riding a, a wave of success the last few years. Yeah. And then out of nowhere, boom, he has to deal with this. It's just amazing how that works. Did you see uh, Steinbrenner? Yeah. Well, you his, know, uh, for the first time in Steinbrenner's uh, career, he has the right to cry. <laughs> he has the right to cry. I don't know. <laughs> Why? Come on, dude. He just looks so goofy. <laughs> well, they interviewed him at spring training today. Yeah, yeah, about the whole thing. And he was kind of getting a little choked up again. I mean, I'm sick of seeing George Steinbrenner cry. I don't care if it's a good reason or not or whatever. I'm just tired of seeing. What happened? What happened to George? The George would, that's always fighting. Remember him and Billy Martin? That was great stuff. Mm -hmm. Just always uh, bashing each other. And he was the, 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 ruled with an iron fist, the tough guy. 
And now it's every time you see him, he's... <laughs> <laughs> the Yankees are the best team in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's had a lot to cry about lately. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> you are the best manager in baseball. <laughs> 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 And he cried over Joe DiMaggio's. No! <laughs> Joe! Oh, number five! Oh, Joe, we'll miss you. You were the greatest Yankee ever! <laughs> so you see him now. And he cried over Daryl Strawberry. No! I want Daryl to know the whole team is behind him. And he's going to come back to the greatest team in baseball. <laughs> That's what we get now out of George. Where's the 70s George? Who wanted to you crack know? some skulls. Now he's got the crazy Eddie outfit on. Yeah, remember his big brawls? You know, him he getting pissed off Reggie Jackson. I mean, it was great. Yeah. Well, he's getting up there in years. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Take it, in, Joe. We'll be waiting for you to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest manager of baseball, God. There I. Well, we just hope they caught the cancer early, Anthony. Well, of course. You know, no ill will toward uh, Joe Torrey. Not at all. It's just sometimes, I mean, you're a public guy like that, and you have that image, that Steinbrenner image. It's kind of hard to just see him deteriorating before your eyes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we got... <laughs> <laughs> So we got on the subject of uh, Joe Torre, yeah. and then we started talking about Babe Ruth and how uh, the final days of his life were not pretty. No, no, no. And I have um, actual audio of Babe Ruth giving a speech to some little leaguers. Oh. This was pretty much weeks before he died, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And this is as real as it comes. So you want? Uh, let me play the audio again. Right. And then we'll get into the whole Bay Ruth calling us today from hell, all right? Okay, let's hear Babe. But this is the, the, the Babe, yeah. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You know how bad my voice sounds. Well, it feels just as bad. You know this baseball game of ours comes up from the youth. The only real game, I think, in the world. Baseball. You got to start... From way down the bottom, when you're six or seven years of age, you've got to let it grow up with you. And if you're successful and you try hard enough, you're bound to come out on top. Just like these boys have come to the top now. Thank you. Give him away, sir. <sighs> if that isn't an anti-smoking commercial right there. Man. Right there. That's not fun to listen uh, to. Yeah, he was just chugging. Uh, anyway, so we played that. And then out of nowhere, because we got caller ID here at the station, so we could prove that it was a, a phone call from yes. hell. We had Babe Ruth on the line earlier. From hell, uh, his language a little salty. Mm -hmm. Opie, but you must remember back, uh, back in his day, he was quite the womanizer. Uh, bad language, drinking. You're just uh, kind of a nasty guy. Whoring around. Yeah. So Play, playing hungover. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Babe Ruth, everyone. <laughs> oh. Our exclusive interview with Babe Oh, that is just so wrong. <laughs> it kind of stinks that he poured a beer in his voice box because we wanted to talk about Joe DiMaggio. Yeah. See, Wonder if he, see if he made it to hell or heaven or not. Well, we, maybe we could recontact him. Who knows? The Rock of New York, 1027 WNEW, Neil Young, and slide before that from the Goo Goo Dolls. It's Sophie and Anthony. Mm -hmm. Closing up another show, I guess. Dunsky? Wow, look at that. The time flew today. Whoa. And you guys got to get to Johnny Lang. So. Johnny Lang. That's right. Hope he's not going. No. Okay. You read the little email from Keith? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's hard to take on the whole world when your girlfriend calls and tells the whole city that... You know, supposedly I dress up the cats and we take pictures. <laughs> you dress up. I can't even hear you say that. I, you, wait, Ann. Come yeah. on. 
I know I take a lot of abuse on this yes. show, and that's okay because we, we all do. Right. We all do. Mm -hmm. Do I dress up my cats, Anthony, and take cute little pictures? Look, I'm going to say this one more time. Uh, Hope it does not dress up his cats. No, can't you do it in your regular voice? No one's going to believe Clinton. <laughs> Come on. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, no. You don't uh, you. dress up your Thank cats. Thank you. To the best of my knowledge. That was just a horrible mistake to take that phone call live last Friday, right? Because well, I'm getting killed. That was How so are we supposed funny. to take on the entire world with people thinking that I'm that much of a puss? Sandy calls up. Sweetie, <laughs> I got the pictures back. You want to see that one, babe? With the sunglasses on, it's so cute. And I was just like, oh, my God, why oh my did God. I hit this phone? Why? I remember it was the last call, too. We, yeah. We were thinking, should we go to the phones? And then does it end there? No, no. no There's no. just abuse about how you did. All of a sudden it turned into, obviously, from what I see, uh, Sandy put some glasses on your cats. Yeah. Snapped a couple of pics. Yeah. She thinks they're really cute. Yeah. And uh, she called you to tell you how cute they were. Well, we're trying to do a radio show. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but it, it gets twisted around into now Opie's dressing his cats in ballerina costumes and having sex with them. And <laughs> well, look, Keith. Keith from oh, I, just, I just added the having sex. Well, though. Keith from Manhattan. <laughs> Keith from Manhattan writes on the instant feedback. I guess Opie is going to is not going to see Giant Like tonight because it's dress up night with the cats. What a pussy! <laughs> I'd rather you guys like abuse me for the whole James thing than this. James, is it a dress up night? No, shut up. No, no. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> I had a really good joke, but I'm not allowed to say that word on the radio anymore. Which one? <laughs> Think cats dress up, fun with cats. Whoa, what? Pusky. Thank you. It was a pretty no. good joke too, but it's not gonna happen. Oh, oh, in that context. Yeah, we're allowed to use the word pussy if we're going. You're like a pussy, man. Yeah, yeah, because it means like wimp. But if we describe a lady's private area, and we using say, that right. Say that word, then the boss upstairs has a real problem with it. So that's why we use the word cunk. <laughs> I scared you there, didn't I? Someone almost drove off the road. <laughs> scared you, didn't I? That was my invention. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That, that brings up the nice memories. Yeah, yeah. Working at another station, we, uh, we invented the word kunk. Right. C-U-N-K. Kunk. Kunk. It's not a word. You will not find it in the dictionary. We Don't send in C O N K, which is a word, and mm -hmm. it, there is no word C U N K. Look it up in the dictionary for right. yourself. The women wanted us dead. They were protesting, dead. writing, writing, uh, you know, hate mail, and yeah, and they wanted us off the radio for using a word that doesn't exist. That's how uptight a lot of people are. Sometimes we'd get a call from an irate uh, woman about something we did, and we'd just turn around and go, "Shut up, you conk." And and it, it, silence. Oh my God, we get letters, and our bosses would have to come to us and say, "Did you call a woman a cunk?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's not a word. It. It's not a word. Look it up. Oh. <laughs> so I guess we got to debut the word "cunk" in New York yes. now. Use it <laughs> in your language to show what kind of a person you are. Use the word "cunk." <laughs> Use it to someone. It's a fun word. Use it to someone you know, and, and they'll lose their ass, and then you go, look, look it up. It's not a word. Mary's being a real cunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I know this is just can't Come be on. going to the phone's line. Come on. Hi, Andy W. Hey, guys. Hey, what's, what's up? On? How what's are up? you? The word you're talking about sounds very much like a word I heard you, Conan O'Brien, use. Crunk. <laughs> crunk? Crunk? Crunk. Hey, man, you're a crunk. Crunk you. See? Interesting. F made up words. There you and go. And I have not heard him use it since. All right. Well, thank you. Maybe he got in trouble. <laughs> People are getting in trouble for made up. Whoa, jeez! <laughs> Did you get it? Yeah, I think I got it. <laughs> God, you ass. <laughs> you can't. I'm going to break my neck trying to get that button. You, you can't say the word. You can't say the word that sounds like that. Jeez. What is your, what is your problem? We thought you guys were a little more mature. Go to the phones live and the guy throws, it, throws out the C word. Uh, We're not talking about the C word. We're no. talking about kunk. Kunk. Uh, 
I got I got that in time, right? I hope so. I think you did. Well, he almost pulled your arm out. You have a button right there. I know. Use that one. You're right. I even have one on my side. Well, then why don't you hit it? I like seeing you scramble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching the countdown going, is he going to get it or are we fired? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Someone throws that word out. We got eight seconds to save our job. Turn your key, sir. Right. Turn your key. <laughs> like we're launching missiles over here. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to get out of here. Yeah, I'm, don't take any more calls, please. You know, I was gonna, I was gonna leave with the Stephen Lynch song because uh, later on this month he's playing, I think, three nights at Caroline's. Ooh. Because of our show, he's now headlining. He's becoming huge. Well, it went very well last time we were there. It sold out, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a great guy, funny, talented. Do we know the dates offhand, Rick? Uh, yeah. Yeah, as he runs down the hall. Off, offhand means it's, offhand it's means off your no. hand. Yeah. It's not off my hand. Well, Someone else's. i got to go find it. Well, put it this way. It's later on this month. I think it's like 20... Fifth, sixth, sixth, sixth uh, yeah, something like that. Whatever. I'll tell you. What you could do is call Caroline's for tickets. Yeah. Stephen Lynch playing three nights later on this month. It's uh, it's a very, very funny show. Yeah. We w really enjoyed ourselves. That was the first time we saw him live. Yeah, a whole different thing than hearing him on the radio when you see him. And, uh, and he has a bunch of songs that he hasn't played for us yet that, uh, wow, are just great. He's holding out. Well, we could play, <laughs> uh, I don't know, what do we got here? Uh, Gerbil song we've played a lot. Yeah. Uh, Special Olympics song we've played a lot. God, I love that one. How about Lullaby? Yeah, we could do that. Want to end with Lullaby? Very touching. All right. <laughs> Tender. Ballad. 